What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC 224. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Marcus Perez versus James uh, Bonjevic. And to me, this fight is super close. I think that I'm going to lean towards... Um, uh, I can't remember which one's the Brazilian dude. I think it's uh, uh, Bojanovic. I think that both these guys are just kind of mediocre, but I think Bojanovic has the better grappling overall. And I think if he can get it to the ground... I think he'll win by submission, so I'm going to lean towards James. Next is Alberto Mian versus Ramazan. I can't say this guy's last name. And This fight's really tough because Alberto Mian, he is undefeated and has great striking and great jiu-jitsu, but he fights so irregularly that it's really tough to bet on him with you know confidence. I feel like Ramazan has such good wrestling that that could beat almost anybody. And just to... Just because of that, I'm leaning towards Ramazan. I think the fact that he fights more consistently and the fact that I think his wrestling is going to give him a big advantage regardless, that I think he's probably just going to either hold um, Alberto against the fence or get the takedowns and win by decision. Next is Talos Leitas versus Jack Marshman. And I don't know. I feel like this fight's probably going to be a striking fight, oddly, because I feel like Jack Marshman likes to either take fights to the ground and ground and pound guys, or just strike with them. And I don't think he wants to take, you know, Talos Lady to the ground and just grapple with him, because I think that's where Talos Lady is going to have a big advantage. So I think what's most likely going to happen is is that they're going to be in a striking fight, and I think that whoever lands that big shot first is going to win. But I'm leaning towards Talos. I think Talos has the better striking overall, and I think that he's going to land that big punch first. So I'm going to lean towards Talos. I say he wins by knockout, either in the first or second round. Next is Warley Alvarez versus uh, Sultan Alivi. And, you know, to me, Sultan isn't super impressive. I feel like he's just got the wrestling. I think striking-wise, um, Warley's got the advantage. I think submission-wise, Warley's got the advantage. The only thing that Sultan's probably got the advantage in is wrestling. And if he can get this fight into the later rounds, probably conditioning. But I just don't see that happening. I think Warley's going to catch him early and probably win by knockout or guillotine in the first round. I just think, you know, he's more consistent and... I think his game is just overall a little bit better. Next is uh, Elizu Dos Santos. I don't know how to say this guy's very name, name very well versus Sean Strickland. And both these guys are really good strikers, but I feel like Sean Strickland's striking style is very basic. It's just fight long and, you know, fight on the outside. As where Dos Santos can kind of mix it up. And I feel like Sean Strickland, we've seen, he has a hard time beating guys that he can't just do that same simple you know, striking combo too. If you can't keep him on the outside at the end of his punches, he kind of struggles. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think Dos Santos is the better striker overall. And I think once Dos Santos is able to get around that reach, he's just going to start lighting up Sean. And I think that Dos Santos might even get like a late third round KO. Next is Davi Ramos versus Nick Hine. And to me, Nick Hine is the better fighter overall. I think his takedown defense and wrestling is better. And I also think that his striking technically is better. I think Davi Ramos is obviously the better jiu-jitsu guy and hits harder, but I just don't think he's going to be able to hit him with one of those big winging shots. And I don't think he has the wrestling to take Nick Hine down. I think Nick Hine's got some of the best takedown defense in the lightweight division. Like, I can't remember him ever being taken down. Like, other than maybe his debut fight. And even then, it was probably just once or twice. So, I like I said, I don't think Davi's going to be able to hit the takedowns like he did in his last fight. And I don't think that his big looping punches are going to be able to hit Nick Heim because his foot moves too good. So, I got Nick Heim winning by decision. Next is Oleksii Olenek versus Junior Albini. And I know Junior Albini is probably a huge favorite in this fight. But to me, you know, his takedown defense isn't super amazing. And I feel like... You know, he has a couple of submission losses on his record. And I feel like as if Elixi can get this to the ground, I think he's got a huge advantage. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to see that big hole in his game. And there's a reason why he had a couple of losses coming into the UFC and they were submission losses. I think Alexi is going to clinch up with him, eventually get this to the ground, and win by submission. Next is Cesar Ferreira versus Carl Robinson. And... You know, Carl Robinson won his last fight by armbar, but I really don't know how good his overall jiu-jitsu game really is. And to me, Cesar Ferreira, we've seen, I mean, striking-wise, Carl's got the advantage, but I just don't think he's going to be able to stop Cesar's wrestling. I think Cesar's going to be able to take him down, and just with his giant body, um, wearing Carl, and I think Cesar's just going to win a unanimous decision. 
Next we got Vitor Belfort versus Leo de Machida, and I just for some reason feel like this fight's gonna be super boring and it's gonna be really slow. I feel like both these guys don't have very active styles overall unless they're pursuing and neither of them like to pursue very much. So I feel like this is gonna be a slow, like whoever just lands a slight bit more punches is gonna win the round. And I'm gonna lean towards Vitor, but like I said, I think this is gonna be a razor thin split decision. It's probably gonna be a really boring fight, but I'm gonna lean slightly towards Vitor. Next is uh, John Lineker versus Brian Kelleher. And to me, Brian Kelleher, you know, he is doing pretty well in the UFC, but I feel like he's about to fight somebody where what he likes to do isn't going to work very well. I don't think he's just going to be able to take John Lineker down whenever he wants. I also don't think he's just going to be able to brawl with him like he has in his last couple fights. I think John Lineker hits way harder than a lot of the dudes he's fought so far. And I think this is going to happen. I think he's going to try to brawl with John Lineker. And eventually John Lineker is just going to clip him with something big. And I think John Lineker is probably going to win by KO in the second round against Brian Keller. So that's how I see it. Next is Mackenzie Dern versus Amanda Cooper. And to me, this is another gimme fight for Mackenzie Dern. Like give it more so her than her debut, in my opinion. I feel like she's fighting a chick who basically is nowhere near as good as her on the ground and is just a decent striker. And I think that's just going to happen. The striking is going to be back and forth, and sooner or later, Mackenzie Dern is going to get to the ground. And I think eventually, Mackenzie Dern is going to win by submission. Next, we got Ronaldo Chakra Souza versus Kelvin Gastelum. And to me, the striking is probably about even. Kelvin probably throws a little bit faster, but I would say overall, they're pretty close. I think on the ground, Chakra is going to have a huge advantage. And I think this is kind of what Kelvin was talking about and why he didn't want to fight at middleweight. I think that Chakra is a lot bigger than him. And it showed in the Chris Wyman fight, and I think it's going to show in this fight. You know, when you fight guys that much bigger than you, even if your takedown defense and your ability to get back up is amazing like Kelvin's is, that size is just really ridiculous. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think Shocker is going to get to the ground. And I think his control is better than Chris Wyman's, the jiu-jitsu style control he has. And I think once he does get to the ground, he's probably going to submit Kelvin in the first round. And that's what I think is going to happen. I think he takes Kelvin down, eventually takes his back, and wins by Rene Kachoke. And finally, we have Amanda Nunez versus Raquel Pennington. And this fight is super tough, in my opinion, just because Raquel Pennington hasn't fought in, like, a year or so. If the Raquel that's been fighting the last, like, four-fight win streak that she's been on comes into this fight, I think she'll win. I think that her aggressive style takes a shitload of cardio for both her and whoever she's fighting. And I don't think that Amanda Nunez is going to be able to keep up with her. We've seen a lot of the chicks that Raquel fights can't keep up with her. She fights at a super high pace. She fights this really, like, lots of takedowns, lots of punches in the clinch and shit. Like, it's a really exhausting style, and you can see that most people just can't keep up with it. And that's why she's been able to win so many fights in a row. Um, my one fear is that she hasn't fought in a while, but I'm going to this fight with the mentality that she's going to look like how she did about a year ago. Amanda Nunes, like, she could win by knockout in the first round. She has that type of power, but... I feel like this is the type of fight, if Raquel fights this fight like how she normally fights, by the fourth or fifth round, I think Amanda's going to be dead tired, and Raquel's probably going to win either late fourth or early fifth, and that's just what I think is going to happen. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.